Okay, I'm gonna try and get this recorded today. It's gonna be part five. Here's hoping this chapter isn't near as long as the other ones were. Doing a little scheming. My lady, I wish to be told exactly what you are planning. What do you mean to accomplish by having Arshu candidates from other Dutch chiefs participate in this religious ceremony? We were told nothing of this. Riyarda declared immediately upon her return to the Arenfest dormitory. I could tell from the way her eyebrows were raised, her hands on her, were on her hips, and her feet were planted firmly that a lecture was on the horizon, but I hadn't done anything to warrant it, one. This will only happen with Duncan Felger's permission, though, I said. That is not the issue. My reproach is because you did not consult us before making such a significant move. Did the OB not say that research done among students requires neither consultation nor permissions, I asked, looking at her quizzically. There had to be some kind of misunderstanding at play. Riyarda shook her head, putting aside the fact that in your case you should be seeking such things regardless. I am saying that you should speak with your retainers who work to your, be to your benefit. At the very least, tell us what you were, are thinking and planning before you take action. But have we not already discussed the ritual to be performed as part of our joint research? I simply put, propose that the other judges take part. We will be doing it either way. Indeed, whether these students took part or not, the ritual was still going to be performed. Riarda shook her head again. Who are you trying to fool exactly? We have only ever discussed you performing the ritual alone. Why have you suddenly decided to involve our student candidates from other duchies? My retainers were all wearing stern expressions, and none of them argued against Riarda. I pursed my lips in dissatisfaction, then put on an exaggerated smile. Well, I can tell you one thing. I most certainly did not grow weary of putting up with greedy middle and lesser duchies who seek nothing but personal gain, speak ill of my adopted family, mock rituals to no end, and refuse to listen to anything I say. Why, that wasn't it at all. You are rather frustrated, I see. You have gotten much better at concealing your emotions, Riarda muttered, than shook her head in exasperation. Now, you will need to learn to how to keep those emotions from influencing your actions. But in any case, my lady, what is your intention having them participate in the ceremony? If they receive permission from Dunkelfelger, then we will hold a dedication ritual here at the Royal Academy. A dedication ritual? As in the one always performed at the temple around this time, Felina asked, placing a hand on her cheek as if remembering Hartman and the others preparing for it. Indeed, I said, is there a more fitting ritual to show Dunkelfelger than the one I performed the most in Arenfest? I would struggle to fill the chalices myself, so I was racking my brain for an alternative, but with so many helpers, it should be easy. Um, Lady Rosemine, is that not stealing water from the Archduke Cairns of other duchies? Grisha asked him, uh, timorously. My other retainers paled as well. I met her gaze and gave her a fine cackle. Oh my, mind your phrasing there, Grisha. There will be no stealing. Participants will all be good-natured individuals who were so eager to assist us that they pleaded with Dunkelfelger for the privilege. They will be offering their mana out of the goodness of their hearts. It will be rude to call that theft, would it, know, would it not? Uh, are they supposed to be... Did you tell them that they, can, that they could come to observe or participate in the ritual? That's two very different things. And if it's participate... Then yes, you've got a point. But if you just if they're assuming that they're just going to be spectating like Dunkelfugger is, then yeah, you got a problem here. And I'm sure the royal family would be pleased to see so many Archduke candidates eager to help. I wasn't forcing anyone to participate. Anyone who took issue with the ritual shouldn't have asked to join in the first place. Lady Rosemine, where exactly is the royal family going to be involved in this? Lorenz asked, looking like he had just heard something extremely ominous. <coughs> Theodore was bobbing his head in agreement, looking like he wanted to run away. Both of them were evidently afraid of the royal family. We will need their permission to use the Royal Academy Shrine, will we not? Furthermore, even if our participants have agreed to help, it would be in poor taste for me to use everyone's mana for myself when the country is in such dire straits. That is why I intend to allow the royal family to see, use it all as they see fit. I was confident that the mono-deprived royal family would rejoice over an offering from such a large crowd of Archduke candidates. Having their gratitude would also keep our participants from complaining. After listening to my explanation with a frown, Matthias nodded, his blue eyes now carrying a certain thoughtfulness. Do you think Dunkelfelger is likely to give these students permission after refusing so many others? 
<coughs> the opinions of greater duchies cannot be changed so easily. But wait a minute. Didn't Ferdinand say the whole reason behind the only the two of them doing the dedication ritual by themselves is that when there's a group of people giving mana like that, the, if there's a great big enough difference in mana capacity, it could essentially kill the lesser ones because they're offering so much. When they might not have it, you know? Oh boy, I wonder if she took that into account. I curve my lips into a grin. I am sure that those from Dunkelfelger will be a little more open to the idea. After I suggest that they only accept those who pay the, play them at dinner, of course. It can only work to their advantage, so as they wish to both investigate the ritual and face more opponents. In other words, you mean to sacrifice our so-called good-natured participants to Dunkelfelger, Matthias said in a daze. <coughs> tut, tut. More poor phrasing. Those students will simply be proving their fervent desire to join our research. I'm certainly not thinking about how this will save me from having to find another ritual, nor how they will spare me the trouble of dealing with Dunkelvoger. No, not at all. They will also be proving more opportunities for us to research Dunkelvoger's dinner research rituals, Lenore added with a smile. Having been convinced that this was in our best interests. Why, they are so passionate and willing to help that I can hardly believe it. I am certainly in favor of Rosemary's suggestion. Matthias sighed and then muttered, I'll admit we wouldn't want to have to play dinner over and over again. Dunkelfelder was a greater duchy with a very large population, so all of our duchy's apprentice knights had to come together whenever we faced them at, all, at dinner. This was That was all well and good for the occasional game, but it would become increasingly problematic if we had to play against them repeatedly and under varying conditions. Wolfred and Charlotte's guard knights would need to be mobilized too. Dunkelfelder will get to explore its ritual and play dinner. I will receive the assistance I need for my ceremony. The royal family will receive a boon of mana. And finally, the lesser and middle duchies will get to participate in our joint research. <coughs> sure, sis, sure, the participants may find themselves stretched thin between dealing with Dunkelfelder and having some uh, audiences with the royal family, and they may struggle more when trying to use their mana during the classes, but is this not a glorious idea? That benefits all parties. My retainers gave uncomfortable looks like they agreed and disagreed at the same time. You have listed a lot of advantages for others, Lady Rosemar, but what do you gain from all, from this personally? I would say that not having to play dinner more with Dunkelfelger is enough, but in truth, there is something else I seek. I cannot reveal any more than that, but let me just say this. If the royal family approves, then we will gain tremendously. Because, I mean, you got, you're got you going to be on the side of the royal family because you helped them in their time of need with the mana shortage. So, yes, of course, you're gonna be, they're going to be in your favor on this one. And you can also prove your loyalties to the king by doing this as well. So, yeah, it's kind of a big boon for you, too. And so I wrote to Dunkelvelger and to Hildebrand. I understood that I selected the third prince specifically because I was asking to use the royal family's, or royal academy's facilities... And I figured that he was more likely to give me permission than Anastasius. In my letters, I made sure to cover all the immediate important details. That there were many who wished to join our research. What Dunkelfelder would gain from forcing them to play dinner. First, that it was in our best interest to have more people witness Aaron Fest's dedication ritual. How the mana obtained would be given to the royal family. And that I wanted to use the shrine within the farthest hall. I will need to hear more first, Kay response. Come to my villa tomorrow afternoon. I sent the letter to Prince Hildebrand, but Anastasius replied. It just doesn't make sense. He was probably in the... It was either he was in the same villa at the time of the Ordinans, or... Um... When they heard the message, uh... Arthur went and told Anastasius about it, because Hildebrand was a little too young to, to be able to give, really get permission on this one. In the end... I was summoned to Anastasius' villa once again. My request was only to borrow the shrine in the farthest hall, so I was relatively fine about going, but that soon changed when I actually arrived. As well as Handler and her retainers, our two dormitory supervisors had been called. This joint research project among students had suddenly turned into a big hullabaloo. Now, Rosemine, tell us exactly what you intend to do, Anastasius demanded with a glare, seemingly exceedingly on guard. Hide nothing. 
I described a joint research project and explained my intentions for Aaron Fest Ritual. Naturally, I made sure to emphasize that the royal family would benefit considerably. After listening to my explanation, Anastasius placed a hand on his forehead before looking between Handler and me. Why do the both of you always turn small matters into large ones? The both of us, I repeated. Handler looked down at her feet, embarrassed. I am um, caused a bit of a fuss and troubled the royal family. Huh? As it turned out, while researching the, re the ritual, Dunkelfelger had ended up creating a massive pillar of light. <coughs> the royal family had received a lot of questions about the strange event, though I had to wonder, had it resulted from Handler and the others trying to recreate the ritual that I performed? That is my fault, isn't it? I asked. Not at all. We experimented with offering our mana as you did, Lady Rosemite, and with changing the spear into various forms. The result was, as you now know, that tremendous light, which formed even in our dormitory, we are entirely to blame. They had apparently separated into two teams to perform the pre-dinner ritual in the training grounds built next to their dormitory. It really spoke to their extravagant wealth as a greater duchy. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Dunkelfelger will do anything or spend any amount of money, amount of mana for the sake of getting stronger. We had many duchies come to us yesterday asking to participate in our joint research, said Roffin, their dormitory supervisor, a broad smile then spread across his face. First, you lit a fire under everyone with a dinner story and a ritual for obtaining real blessings, and now you've gotten us a mountain of opponents. I can't thank you enough for it, Lady Rosemine. Your reputation in our dormitory shot up all at once. We threw a huge celebration last night in your honor. Yeah, I don't really want a reputation like that, thanks. I'd been hoping that the wave of new challengers would slow Dunkelfogger down a little, but they had welcomed them all without even breaking a sweat. In fact, now they were inviting other duchies to participate. If you intend to play dinner after receiving blessings from the gods, then perhaps you should allow the other duchies to group together into teams, I said. Plus, if you demonstrate the strength that can be obtained through rituals, they might take religious ceremonies more seriously henceforth. It would be just like how I told Aaron Fest's apprentice knights to learn from Dunkelfogger and earn blessings on their own. Hmm. Um, rather, won't it be way more exciting for Dunkelfogger if your opponents are stronger too? Indeed! Ruffin was clearly enthusiastic, though our conversation began to simmer down now that we were in, in agreement. It was then that Handler nervously spoke up. We are fine with letting these other duchies participate, as Dunkelfelger benefits as well, but will there not be too many names to credit? My brother said the contributions will hardly be meaningful. I personally disagree with that last statement, since they were going to be participating in the dedication ritual and playing dinner. But that still meant very little to Dunkelfelger. Playing dinner and performing rituals come as naturally as breathing to Dunkelfelgerians. It makes sense that they don't consider them worthy of credit. We needed some kind of compromise, something that would ease Dunkelfelger's concerns that the other duchies weren't doing enough, while simultaneously appeasing those who wanted credit. How, now that I thought about it, however, I'd only extended invitations for people to participate in the ritual. There hadn't been any promises of them being credited. They had convinced themselves of that. After some thought, I pointed a finger in the air and smiled. In that case, how about we list them as helpers at the end of the research announcement? We can list the names of the apprentice knights who answered our questionnaire and the Archduke candidates and arch nobles who assisted with the ritual while the joint research itself remains between Dunkelfogger and Ehrenfest. Everyone should be satisfied with that. Well, Handler examined me carefully for a moment then nodded. That will do, I suppose. I am sure my brother will agree too. Please tell Lord Lestalot to do his best with his classes. We must wait for him to finish before we can start the ritual. It should not be long now. He has been working especially hard to impress you with his speed, Handler said with a wry smile, remarking on how her brother was blazing through her cla his classes. He was apparently due to finish at about the same time he had finished last year, a remarkable feat given that he was now a sixth year. Well, consider me surprised. I did not think he had it in him. Do contact me when your dinner game with the other duchies are over and you have decided on our participation, our t participants for the ritual. You can count on me, came an unexpected interjection from Roffin. Handelor and I glanced at him, then shrugged in unison. Anastasius cleared his throat, Rosemine, regarding your request. You may not know this, but the shrine in the farthest hall is managed by the Sovereign Temple. I was already aware of that fact. After all, the Sovereign Temple was responsible for performing both the Starbind Ceremony at the Archduke Conference and the Royal Academy's Coming-of-Age Ceremony. 
You will need their permission to use the Academy's divine instruments, and Anastasius continued, but it seems we are fairly busy at the moment. Yeah, she's going to need the divine instruments for that because she can't just recreate them with her staff. She can't only create one at a time. The Sovereign Temple had scraped together the Blue Priests and Shrine Maidens with the most modern from all sorts of duchies, as it, so it probably wasn't struggling as much as Arenfest. At the same time, though, it was possible that it had more chalices to fill. I mean, it's probably... I don't know how big the Sovereignty is in comparison to all of Jürgen Schmidt. <coughs> in that case, I continued, I will take what we need from Arenfest. Could we at least borrow the room with the shrine? I want our participants to understand they are praying to the gods. You may, as long as you do not touch the shrine itself. I am grateful, I replied, but then something occurred to me. Um, but if we cannot touch the shrine, then we won't be able to take down the chalices to fill them with mana, will we? How will we get around that? Could you make an exception for that one case? We could always get Arenfest to send over a mana conducting carpet, but unless we could actually man remove the chalices, we wouldn't be able to offer our mana. No, no, you must. We must accept that our hands are tied. I suppose I could just make a chalice with my staff, so that won't be a problem. But you can, Anastasius exclaimed, wide-eyed. I could indeed. One of the spells that I'd come across in the underground archive had outlined the process clearly. However, I continued, the royal family will not be able to bring my chalice back to the sovereignty. You will either need to learn to make chalices yourself, or you will need to bring an abundance of empty face stones. It would be far quicker for the royal family to make chalices with their staffs, but creating divine instruments was only doable if you'd frequently channeled mana into them. I imagine that the next uh, chapter is the actual dedication ritual. It would also be impossible to make chalices without touching the shrine, and maintaining them will require an exceedingly large amount of mana. More than the royal family could spare, I assumed. For those reasons, perhaps the face stone approach was more reasonable. Hold on, but the bad thing is with that is that if you put too much mana into them, they turn to gold dust. Anastasius heaved a tired sigh. The royal family had apparently been convinced that they would need to pass on this generous offering of mana as they didn't expect the Sovereign Temple would allow it. So, in other words, if we are unable to borrow the Divine Instruments, we can fashion chalices ourselves, or move the mana from your chalice using empty face stones. You certainly know many underhanded tricks, Rosemine. I cackled. You can thank my teacher. Anastasius put a hand on his forehead again. To be frank, the windfall mana you are providing through this dedication ritual will be of tremendous help to us. I am glad to help hear it. I would like the royal family to participate, participate as well, but will that be possible? You wish for us to participate? Anastasius asked, again surprised. I gave a solemn nod. By having them take the lead, we can make it all the more difficult for other duchies to back out. Plus, the royal family needed divine protections, and the more opportunities they had to pray seriously, the better. Am I right to assume that this conflict with the Sovereign Temple has prevented the royal family from engaging in any true religious ceremonies, I asked? Praying together improves the flow of mana and makes it easier to receive blessings, so why not join us? Of course you are by no means obliged to. I shall think about it. Thus concluded the groundwork for the ritual. After receiving a scolding from Hersher, who told me not to interrupt her research with such pointless summons again, I returned to the dormitory and reported both to back to Arenfest. I explained the sequence of events that had resulted in our plan to perform a dedication ritual, with the royal family, then asked them to send over a mana conducting carpet, offerings to the gods, my ceremonial high bishop robes, and my sibling's ceremonial robes, among other things. Charlotte and I are joining too, Wilfred asked. Indeed, if we all perform together and in the same way, then we can eradicate one negative rumor contributing to our father's bad reputation. This is going to be your first time joining me for the dedication ritual, but the process is the same as the channeling mana into the foundational magic. I have no doubt that you will succeed on your first attempt, so please try to act as though you've been done it a whole hundred times before. They both nodded in response. Lady Rose, my reply from Arenfest has arrived. According to the letter, our situation here in the Royal Academy had blown so far out of proportion that Florencia had fainted upon reading my report. A note written in Sylvester's hand specified two things. 
that they would be sending everything we needed, and that they weren't to, we weren't to fail under any circumstances. Now the royal family was involved. Well, no dip. Failure is not an option. Incidentally, also included was a letter from Hartman. He had apparently cried bitter tears upon reading Clarissa's report and was once again bemoaning the fact that he had graduated too soon. <laughs> <coughs> I hate being sick. His handwriting was a little, uh, intense. He had written so forcefully that the lines were all shaky and each word was practically engraved in the page. I'm surprised it didn't tear through the paper with how hard he wrote. I'm actually kind of afraid to return to Aaronfest now, although Nora muttered. Hartman is going to be in enormous pain, I'm sure. I sent, wrote, sent a response to Hartman explaining my plan to have all of my adult retainers redo their divine protection ceremonies and noting that he would want to memorize the gods' names and pray to them daily in preparation. I thought that having something to do would raise his spirits, but Judith was unconvinced. Hartman will complete the task in no time, she said. Perhaps you could also ask him to help Angelica memorize the names? That should hit, keep him busy all winter. Feline's face turned a shade paler. Won't that just put more of a burden on Daniel? Ah, Judith squeaked and laughed. I'm sure he'll be fine. No, he won't. As my retainers continued to chatter, the corner of my lips curved into a warm smile. It was nice to see them acting like such good friends. Indeed, for the first time in a while, I was truly at peace. Knew it. Oh, preparing for the ritual. Hold on. Is, uh... The actual ritual... Okay, the actual ritual is doing this. Okay. <coughs> 21 minutes. <coughs> Hold on, guys. I got... I'm going to see how many more chapters are here. Keep praying the ritual. Uh, wait, the Royal Academy's dedication ritual. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven, and then the epilogue. Okay, technically eight, since I haven't done the pre preparing for it yet. <coughs> preparing for the ritual. We had agreed to perform the dedication ritual in front of the shrine in the room behind the Royal Academy's auditorium. But it wasn't going to happen right away. Lestalot still needed to finish his classes, and Aerofest had to complete its own dedication ritual. In the meantime, the Duchess that had approached Dunkelfelger about joining our research will play dinner to decide who was actually allowed to participate. Mariella, please send an order announced to Dunkelfelger regarding the participants, I said. Ask them to grant permission only to Archnobles and Archduke candidates, as anyone with a smaller mana capacity will struggle greatly. Furthermore, inform them that any first years who have just recently learned mana compression cannot participate either. Even while relying on face stones filled with my mana, Wolfram and Charlotte had struggled to perform the ritual back when they were just getting start used to controlling their own mana. Plus, in other duchies, it was apparently common for children to wait until they had picked up a mana compression method at the Royal Academy before supplying their foundational magic. We wouldn't have adults there to assist all the beginners. So it was simply too dangerous for those who had never supplied mana before to participate. A reply has come, Lady Rosemine. They accept your conditions and are prepared to play. They are just waiting for the lesser and middle duchies to form teams among themselves. Wow. They all have my deepest sympathies. I clasped my hands together in silent prayer, then reached for the books that I was borrowing. I suppose I shall read for now. Everything else can be prepared after the temple's dedication ritual is concluded. And so my time was spent leisurely reading books, going to Hersher's laboratory, and just otherwise relaxing. I attended some tea parties, but pretty much all anyone did was complain about having to play dinner to participate in our research. Well, dude, how do you... This is going to be a big thing. Of course you're going to have to do a lot to participate in it. <coughs> it seemed that those from Dunkelbugger still weren't massively impressed that we had finished our way into playing speed rather than treasure stealing dinner. Previously, as they had taken great care to ensure that those next games were going to be of the treasure-stealing variety. The other duchess had certainly learned about this version during written lessons, but they had never actually played it. As a result, even after forming a team of their best players, they had been utterly thrashed. No amount of rejuvenation potions had been enough. I smiled at their grumbling. Dinner is a necessary requirement for doing research with Dunkelbugger. Aaron Best had to play against them as well. Uh, though our game of treasure stealing dinner took place during my first year. Still, I'm not lying to them. 
All this talk about joint research and plain dinner was so much less emotionally draining than listening to people that had bad-mouthing Sylvester. For the first time in my life, I was actually grateful for Dr. Fargo's obsession. Aside from that, I also had to listen to progress write reports from the apprentice scholars doing research with Jeronkel. Gundolf was putting a lot of passion into the project, apparently. He had already included the paper in various uh, brews that brought... Not that spe not the special traits of such fa each fay plant. The changes themselves were only slight, such that the nonsense paper was used for identification, traveling faster or slowing movements from further distances than before. So the paper's effects are enhanced, I mused. My end goal was to produce moving books for my library, which are sure to be much heavier than long sheets of paper. <coughs> So please tell them to keep working hard such, until such a thing is possible. Those books will also include magic circles. And would like to reduce mana expenditure by improving the quality of the ingredients. Apparently one could transcribe a song onto a sheet of effing paper and then run a face stone across it to produce music. Still, there was plenty more room for research. Cool. If one simply needs to move a face stone over the sheet of music, then perhaps we could stick effing paper to instruments to create automatic performances. I murmured. My thoughts immediately wandered to a pipe organ from my Arano days that had it automatically played whenever music roll, whenever music roll was inserted into it. The spectacle truly had been am am amazing. I had mostly been speaking to myself, but Marianna heard my mutterings and said, "Allow me to pass these suggestions on to Professor Gundolf. We of Arenfest were recently chastised for having no interesting ideas. If you are fine with using my thoughts rather than your own, then certainly." <coughs> it seemed that Aaron Fest scholars were, weren't yet able to keep up with those from Jawanko who were pouring their all into their research. Marianne in particular had lost some of her confidence. After you graduate and return to Aaron Fest, there will not be many opportunities for you to participate in research of such high caliber as this. As this project with Jawanko, I said, though there may be times where you struggle with the Perceived gap between you and the other students, or when you feel disheartened by the stern words of your professors, you mustn't get so down. Keep your chin up and pray on, press on with your research. Can I talk right? We had just received a report from Clarissa informing us that Lestola had finished his classes. She had also included the results of their questionnaires. It seemed that Duncan Felger's attendants and Scholars of the Sword possessed many divine protections as well. Dr. Felger truly is a duchy that exists for and has thrived on dinner, Feline observed, moved. I gave a firm nod of agreement. According to what was discussed during the tea party, the apprentice knights are still overwhelmed by the dinner matches. Dr. Felger may be livelier than ever, but the other duchies are exhausted. I can imagine Feline then produced a, a board with which she extended to me. On that note, here is a list of students who will be participating in the ritual. Do have a look. I accepted and then started to read from the board, listed with the duchies that had passed the dinner selection process, and alongside each one were the names of three to eight students, with the higher ranked duchies having having more representation. More than half of all the duchies in Jurgen Smith were due to participate, with more than sixty students in total. I see there are going to be greater duchies participating as well, I said. I had assumed they would simply observe until the results became clear. This is the perfect opportunity to learn what other duchies are researching ahead of time, and our research into de increasing one's divine protections is expected to draw more attention than anything at the inter tournament. In other words, they were taking full advantage of this chance to participate in what was sure to be a very big event. Names from Klassenberg, Drewankel, and Ehrensbach were listed as well. Every single Archduke candidate from Drewankel was going to be involved, while Ehrensbach was putting, a forward only, was putting forward only apprentice scholars meaning that Delende would not be participating herself, of course. I tilted my head as I continued to look through the names. I see that Emmerdink is not here, despite how much his representative expressed their desire to participate during tea parties. There were only a few lesser and middle duchies with the leeway to play dinner. Many backed out when they heard about others getting beaten down and the cost of rejuvenation potions and such. Mm, I could see why I, dumped, I, why I dumped all this on other duchies, specifically because I didn't want to endure it myself. I wonder whether the, wondered whether the dedication ritual will prove a nightmare for the duchies that had expended a ton of rejuvenation potions on their dinner games. Aaronfest's gathering spot was overflowing with high-quality ingredients, but the same could not be said for those of other duchies. 
Maybe we should distribute rejuvenation potions? Lady Rosemary, we will need to explain the process of the ritual to the participants, Felina continued, snapping me back to reality. True, let's see. I suppose they will need to know how to cleanse themselves on the morning of the ritual, to prepare rejuvenation potions, and to memorize the re relevant prayer. They will not have ceremonial robes, but there is no helping that. As I recall in my days as, a, as an apprentice blue shrine maiden, when the temple had only wanted me for my mana. Perhaps we should send those instructions by ordinance and then guide the apprentice scholars separately? The prayer they need to write need is written on this board, so have them transcribe it for themselves. Understood, my apprentice scholars replied, all nodding their assent. Rose, my Wilfred called out to me, looking worried. I don't know the prayer for the dedication ritual either. I've only ever helped with spring prayer in the Harvest Festival. It is the same prayer that we speak when supplying monitors to the foundational magic. Would you like a reminder, though? I wrote the prayer out on a separate board and then handed it over. After skimming the text, Wilfred visibly relaxed and sighed in relief. Charlotte looked it over as well, having been watching from the sidelines, and then smiled she was going to be fine with it as well. By the way, Wilfred said, we got our report from Erinfest. Seems like their dedication ritual is over, and they're preparing the tools we need. Sounds like getting everything from the temple is the castle, and during the snow, is proving difficult. Moving luggage was never a problem with my panda bus, but those in Erinfest were currently relying on normal high beasts. They had also yet to slay this year's Lord of Winter, so the blizzards were at their worst. Cornelius Hartman and the others were apparently having to go back and forth between the temple and the castle. Wolfric continued, they also said you should get the royal family's permission for Hartman to participate in the ritual. Just as Ferdinand had brought the Bible last year, there needed to be someone present who can manage the tools used for the ritual. Hartman maintained that this duty belonged to the high priest. I get the feeling that he just wants to see your ritual, Lady Rose, my Judith said. Laura, Lenore Lana, without a doubt. Agreed. He does. He, want, he wants to see it. <clears throat> Felina and Roderick exchanged glances, both wearing amused smiles. I imagine you are correct, Judith, but there are no great priests in the Royal Academy to prepare the ritual, Felina said. Nor are we receiving help from the Sovereign Temple, correct? Status is important when working in the Royal Academy, Roderick added. You will struggle to man manage and prepare everything on your own, Lady Rosemine, and Hartman and Archnoble would make for an ideal assistant. Indeed, it would be a struggle to carry out the ritual with only those from the Arab Best Dormitory. Felina and Roderick had both witnessed Hartman's preparations for becoming the High Priest, and they knew how many strict, detailed traditions needed to be observed during religious ceremonies, but that wasn't enough. They didn't have any of the temple's ceremonial me ceremonies memorized, nor had they even watched one, as only the priests were allowed to attend. We needed someone who could take charge. I suppose we have no choice but to summon Hartman, I conceded. I swiftly wrote a letter to Eglantine. No matter how, which member of the royal family I attempted to contact, it was always Anastasius who replied, so maybe we should have would have been better off sending it his way to begin with? Probably. And as expected, an ordinance didn't arrive from Anastasius. He said that Hartman was allowed to attend, and then added, Father is going to be participating in the ritual as well, to so send us both a thorough description of the process and a list of every expected participant. He seems to believe it proper and necessary to thank all those who were gathering to offer us mana. Oh, God! The king is going to be participating, too. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Erebus, you need to know this. You need to know this. Oh, God. Has she told Ferdinand about all this? Oh, God. Boy, what's he gonna think? What's he gonna think? He's probably gonna wanna watch this too. <coughs> the king himself was gonna participate, perhaps because I had advised the royal family to experience the rituals for themselves. They would certainly receive plenty of divine protections if they learned the prayer for the dedication ritual, since they were pouring such enormous quantities of mana into Jurgen Smith. While I merely saw this as a nice opportunity to ease the burden on the royal family, everyone else was absolutely losing their minds. Hold on, Wilfred. Yep, the king is joining? Doesn't that make this an even huger deal than it already was? This is unexpected, dear brother, but there is no stopping it now, Charlotte said, a vacant look in her eyes. Is this really that serious, I asked? Girl, it's the king. The king. It's not like it's Anastasius and the others. No, this is the king we're talking about here. All, they're, all we're doing is getting everyone to offer up their mana. Charlotte gave me a very troubled look. I can understand why you may not value mana you might yourself, sister. Your capacity is so large, and receiving all those divine protections has given you more than you could handle. 
but the shortage affecting the world is severe beyond words. The king himself considers it necessary to thank those who are offering theirs in support. Normally, the only way to get direct praise from the king is to come first in class, Wolfrey added. Yet now he's offering to praise all of our participants. That's how big of a deal this ritual is yours to become. Charlotte was right. My abundance of mana had earned me, caused me to greatly underestimate its value. Only now was it occurring to me that my little plot had ballooned out of control. No dip. You finally realize this? As it requested, I copied the ritual process and listed participants onto a board, which I then had delivered to Anastasia's villa. If mana really is as important, then perhaps I should offer rejuvenation potions as a participation reward I mused aloud. A participation reward? Charlotte repeated, blinking. I nodded. It seems the duchies that play dinner had to use a significant number of rejuvenation potions in the process. Surely they will need more after offering their mana. The lesser and middle, du middle duchies were already assisting us with the ritual. It would be too great to ask to have them supply their own potions on top of that. Plus, if they can immediately replenish their mana, then perhaps they would feel more at ease about this being about it being stolen. As we are going to be receiving so much mana from everyone, I continue, perhaps we should distribute Ferdinand's kindness-filled potions to help everyone recover. Sister, I do not mean to sound rude, but any duchies that receive those potions will surely assume they are some manner of cruel joke. Is there not something better tasting that we could give them? Blendroof fruits made the rejuvenation potions fairly drinkable, but they were rare and could only be gathered in Hollandsdale. That is to say, they weren't something we could easily obtain in the Royal Academy. If we'd rather use an alternative, there are potions that regenerate, rejuvenate one's mana but don't relieve exhaustion. I wasn't sure about using those, however, as the students not used to the ritual were sure to end up feeling completely spent. Replenishing their mana should be enough. How do they taste, though? Not that bad, in my opinion. But how are we supposed to trust your sense of taste when you down uncle's potions like they're nothing, Wilfred said. Or asked, we should taste test them ourselves. Charlotte nodded in enthusiastic agreement, so I went into the dormitory to dormitory's brewing room and made a few minor exclusive rejuvenation potions for them to try. After serving as our, taste, our test subjects were the apprentice knights who had gathered the ingredients. It doesn't taste that bad, Wilfred said. Not much different from normal, reju normal rejuvenation potions. The strength and onset of action is far inferior, though, I noted. If we are going to distribute these them to other duchies, then we will want something more effective. Let us go with the kindness-infused potions. Unfortunately, it seemed that I was the only one who held this opinion. The apprentice knights who regularly used normal potions for the classes all shook their heads. For those of us who are used to normal potions, the less effective versions is more than enough. They act quickly and restore a lot of mana. Plus, rather than giving the other students potions they may refuse based on the taste and smell, it is it not safer to distribute something they are guaranteed to drink? On the strong, strong recommendation of Charlotte and the Apprentice Knights, I elected to distribute mana-only rejuvenation potions. They could easily be made from ingredients that were readily available at our gathering spot. In that case, we shall make potions for all participants, I said. There was no time for me to ask Ferdinand whether leaking the recipe was okay, so I simply asked Roderick and Mirielle to help and order them to tell no one. Lady Rosamond, I believe you could have done this on your own, Roderick said, exhausted, be having taken quite some time to cut and subsequently brew the ingredients. Mirielle smiled and noted that it would have been improper for me to hole up in the brewing room all on my own, and with that she began carrying the boxes out of the brewing room. It was the day of the ritual. After finishing our breakfast, we ushered you carriers for carrying out final checks in the common room when Hartman arrived from the teleporter dressed in his ceremonial blue priest robes. Lady Rosemine, he said, I have with me the tools required for the ritual, and here are your ceremonial robes. We are at a great ship. Please make the necessary preparations to change my clothes, I said. They sprang into action in my instructions, as did those serving Wolfrey and Charlotte. Lord Wolfrey, Lady Charlotte, as you have never participated in the ritual, you do not have robe cords or ornaments that are the divine color of winter, Hartman said. I have asked your retainers to find materials and such that do that will do as replacements. Apparently this task was keeping their castle attendants especially busy. The ceremony is this afternoon, I said. We must ask the royal family to open the farthest hall then spend the morning carrying out any final preparations. Hartman, can I trust you to oversee things there? You may count on me. This is a ritual rep representing Lady Rosemine, the Saint of Aaron Fest. It must be perfect. I offer my prayers and gratitude to the gods that I am able to participate in the Royal Academy's dedication ritual. Harmon declared, drawing all eyes out to himself as he pretty much launched into prayer. I was a little concerned about his over-the-top enthusiasm, but as we were moments away from a ritual, 
that was going to involve the royal family, having someone so invested in making things perfect was just what I needed. As I watched Hartman out of the corner of my eye while he would continue to pray, I sent an ordinance to the royal family. Only they, Archdukes, Archdukes, and those entrusted with the royal family's monitor through face stones were able to open the farthest hall. That was one of the reasons why they need always, there always needed to be a member of the royal family present at the Royal Academy. All of my retainers not preparing my changes are closed. That is, everyone except Riarda and Grisha will be accompanying me to the farthest hall, I said. It will be rude of us to arrive after the royal family, so let us hurry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, friend Charlotte likewise brought their retainers along. We had our retinue bring everything we would need for the ceremony, then started waiting in the auditorium. Hildebrand arrived in no time at all. Rosemind, he said, Prince Hildebrand, I offer my humble gratitude for your assistance today. After we had exchanged lengthy greetings, Hildebrand got his head attendant Arthur to lift him up so that he could touch the face stones, or the face stone on the door leading to the farthest hall, and it promptly opened. For classes, we lend face stones to the professors so they could open the door themselves, Hildebrand explained. Today, however, I was really adamant about doing it myself. Hildebrand was still too young to participate in the actual ritual. He had asked to join, but it would be unacceptable for a member of the royal family to overexert themselves and pass out, so we had asked Anastasius to talk him out of it. Perhaps as a compromise to keep Hildebrand from feeling too left out, the king had permitted him to open the door instead. Oh, he got to do something. After ensuring that everything we needed was brought into the farthest hall, Hartman started to oversee the preparations. I was about to follow after him, but Brunhilde tugged on my sleeve and smiled at me. It seemed that my duty here was to deal with Hildebrand. Father has ordered that only those from Aaronfest may enter the hall until the preparations are finished, Hildebrand said. I see that you are actively looking, actively looking for ways to assist us, Prince Hildebrand, I said. Finding his pride in his job very heartwarming. From there, it answered my he answer I answered any questions he had about the ritual. Rosemind, there are a lot of people due to participate today, aren't there? Well, they'll... Where will the guard knights be attending? No guard knights may be present for ceremonies, ceremony events. Only those participating in the ritual are allowed inside the farthest hall. What? Hildebrand asked, blinking. I started blinking in turn. Only priests and shrine maidens may be present for ceremonies. The same is true for the Sovereign Temple Starbine ceremony, is it not? I asked them whether I could bring guard knights with me to when participating as the High Bishop, and they were strongly against it. This is also a religious ceremony, so any guard knights will need to wait outside the auditorium. Arthur inhaled sharply and they cried, I was not aware of this. His eyes were wide and he was intensely uh, resistant to the idea, but I wasn't going to budge. There will be a great many Archduke candidates involved in the ritual, I said, and there, are sim there simply is not room for everyone to bring their retainers inside. Furthermore, all those present when the mana begins to flow will be at risk of having their mana sucked out, whether they are actively participating or not. Any guard knights in attendance will struggle to protect their charges effectively. But there is no precedent for Archduke candidates or members of the royal family leaving their guard knights behind. It is, un it is unthinkable, Arthur protested. Both he and Hildebrand were unwilling to accept reality. As I understand it, the one religious ceremony that Archduke candidates and the members of the royal family still perform is manner replenishment. Upon their foundations, I said. In Aaronfest, guard knights cannot enter the room where we supply mana to the foundational magic. And instead, stand in attention outside the door. Do guard knights enter the manner replenishment hall and the sovereignty? No, Arthur replied, only those of the royal family who are supplying their mana. The same principle applies to all other religious ceremonies as well. Now, let me propose this. Would the royal family feel safe if we positioned only Arifest guard knights in the room for the ceremony? No, they would only feel safe in the presence of the sovereign knight's order, Arthur replied, all airing his distrust of other duchies. Precisely. And with the participants in such vulnerable positions having to kneel with their hands on the floor and channel their mana, it is only natural that they would be on guard against those with, with weapons. Just as the royal family would not be able to trust Arifest guard knights, we would not be able to trust the guard knights of another duchy. It is best that we simply rid ourselves of those with mouths to begin with. Rid ourselves of those with malice? How would we accomplish that? By filtering the participants through, through Shootsaria's shield. Those who wish the royal family ill will not be able to enter. Okay, uh, I'm going to have to end this one off. I will see you guys in the next one.